Boom, 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 boom. It's very hard for him to break my guard. I've let the shoulder take the other punch. I can get there and back faster. On this video, I'm going to talk about the four different stances and guards that we see in boxing. I'm also going to tell you the pros and cons of each one and give you some tips on how to beat someone with that boxing stance. My name is Tony Jeffries, Olympic medalist boxer, former undefeated professional, seven times national champion, European champion, and today I'm joined by my business partner, top boxing fitness expert, Kevin Watson. So the first stance is kind of like the Roy Jones Jr., Prince Nazim Hamid. This is a stance that everyone thinks looks cool, and it does look cool, and people try to do, which is having their hands down. So I'll be in front of my opponent, I'll have my wide stance, my hands down head moving and this is a, a good stance for a lot of reasons but as well it's a bad stance for a lot of reasons and the reason why it's good is I'm in front of my opponent here I'm moving if he throws a jab I can slip and come back with my counter punches there and it makes him really think and makes him really wary about throwing the punches if I'm in front of him like this then he throw a jab boom 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 and I'll come back and he'll slip out of the way. So the pros with this is your opponent doesn't know what you're going to throw, which makes it very wary for him to throw a punch because he's going to be expecting a counter punch coming from a different sort of angle than he's used to. And as well, another pro with having this style is you're staying relaxed. Your upper body's relaxed. You're not using too much energy compared to traditional boxing styles where you might be tight. Now, going on to the cons about this style is, well, the first one is your hands is down. You're wide open. And all you're doing for defense is relying on your reactions. So you've got to have very, very good reactions to have this boxing stance. So if you're in the ring with an opponent like this, how would you beat them? Well, I'm going to give you a couple of different ways. The first thing you want to be doing is you want to be fainting. You want to be throwing the punch. Because if he's fainting all the time to me, now what that does, that keeps me thinking. And now I'm getting wary of throwing punches because I don't know what's going to come back at me. So yeah, definitely keep fainting. And then the other way to beat someone like this is throw multiple punches. If you're throwing single punches, throwing single punches, I can always come back with the counters and that's what I would want if I had that boxing stance is my opponent to throw single punches so I encounter him fast now what he should do is throw multiple punches moving forward now let's see if he throws multiple punches at me and I've got my hands down now I'm here now I'm on the ropes now I'm where he wants me to be which is on the ropes. so that's what you want to do you want to throw multiple punches try and cut the ring down getting this guy to get onto the ropes Keeping them hands tight, always be wary of the counter punches coming at you. Number two is the peekaboo style. And we see fighters like uh, Mike Tyson with his hands up in this peekaboo style position. And my favorite fighter to have this style was Ronald Winky Wright. And I've done a full video on the tight guard, the pros and cons. So we'll click up here, wherever it is, and watch that full video because I'll break it down for you, telling you exactly what you need to know about that. And this is called the peekaboo style because when you've got your hands up, every time you pull your hands down, you've got to see a peekaboo. Peekaboo, peekaboo. That's, <laughs> that's a joke. You don't do that. So with this stance, you've got your hands up and you're very tight. You want to be covering your full body here. So if I'm in with a traditional boxer and I've got this peekaboo style, my hands are up and he throws the punches, it's very hard for him to break my guard, get through and create space with these punches here. It's great for not getting hit. That is the biggest pro for this, is obviously the defense. You've got your hands up, you can't really get hit when you're in that position. Now the cons for me totally outweigh the pros. The cons are, even right there, when he's still pulling the, pulling the punches, if you notice, he's just touching there, but the punches are still hitting my glove against my head, so I can still feel it. And as well, when he is here, and he's throwing the punches, like, my vision is very blocked. It's hard to really see. And when he throws them hooks around the side, I can't see these punches coming, because I'm blocking here. And now the other thing is, when I want to throw punches, my punches have got to come all the way from here, all the way out, all the way back. They've got that extra distance to travel compared to the traditional style. If I'm here, it's got less distance to travel than here. And now the less distance it's got to travel, the faster it's going to get there. So them are a couple of the cons 
of the peekaboo style. So how to beat someone with this style? I mean, the, the big thing is try and keep the punches long. You don't want to smother your punches. He's trying to get in close to me. So if he's in close to me, now I'm in his range. Now he can throw the punches and land them. I want to try and keep the punches long. Keep them out, out of distance like this. And then from there, what I want to do is try and create space. So I'll hit him up to the head to try and land that body shot. Hit him up to the body, then try and land the head shots after that. So we're hitting high, going low, hitting low, going high, and as well, not smothering your work, not letting him dictate the pace and put the pressure on. And definitely, you want to keep off the ropes when you're fighting someone like this. Number three is the Philly shell. Now, this is getting very popular through the likes of Floyd Mayweather. Also, Roy Jones was a master at the Philly shell as well. And what you're doing here, you're defending your body with your lead hand here. Your backhand's here, defending the hooks that's coming in. And then your shoulder is defending the straight punches here. And because your hands are here, you've got great vision to see everything else that's coming at you. So when I'm boxing with the Philly shell here and he'll throw the one, two, I'll defend it like this. One, two, again. So I've parried and then I've let the shoulder take the other punch. Even when he aims for my head, there, I'm defending that by blocking with the shoulder which can be very effective. And then if he throws the one, two hook, I'll defend it with this one. So he's done the one, two hook. There, I've defended it with my back hand there. Again, one, two hook. Yeah, so it can be very useful for defending punches. Like I said, with the vision open, it's great because you've got great vision. So the pros with the Philly shell is, like I mentioned, the vision is great because you've got your hands here, you're not blocking your face. Also, you're putting yourself in a great position to counter. If he throws a right hand at me, I've blocked there. Look, I'm in that great position to come back with a right hand of my own. Yes, so them are some of the pros there. Now, the cons is you've got this lead hand down here. You've got to have great reactions to be able to, to defend uh, the punches coming out. And as well with this, you're blasting someone in the arm. If you're getting blasted in the arm all, all the time, guess what? Your arm is going to be tired in round two, three, four, five. So, you know, you've got to think about that as well. When I, when I boxed people who did this style, I used to always throw that big right hand over the top. So I'd throw a jab to the body, and I'd throw the right hand over the top. He's blocked it with his shoulder. I would step in and throw another one and keep throwing them punches over the top. And they were kind of stuck in this position there. So if you are fighting someone with a shell, Philly shell, what you need to do is work on feints and getting your feet closer to land them punches. They want to stay out of range like this. You want to get your feet closer and then throw the punches and land at the punches. Now, moving on to number four. This is the boxing stance that I recommend. This is the boxing stance that I did, that I recommend everyone does, especially when you're starting out boxing, before you figure out what stance you want to do. And that is the traditional boxing stance. With your legs just more than shoulder width apart, hands up by the face. You've got your right hand tight to your body here to defend these punches, your lead hands out a little bit. Now you look at someone like a Cripple G, who's a master at this style, with great footwork and great defense. Hands up high. Now this here is solid defending the punches. And if I'm in front of a, an opponent, my, my lead hand is out just a little bit, which means I can get there and back faster than if my hand was here, all the way out and all the way back. And with this hand out as well, it's great to find the range, trick it moving up and down, keep my opponent thinking with the feints up and down, then throwing the punches. So you can really find the rage with this lead hand, keeping this one tight for if he comes forward with multiple punches, then I can block it up, then I can come back with punches of my own. So some of the pros with the traditional boxing stance is, I think the first one is balance. So you've, you're in a great balanced position when you throw them punches, you can throw long combinations and keep in a great balanced position. I've done a video on keeping your balance when you throw long combinations, so check that video out as well. So the balance is great compared to another stance where it might be here with your arm down and your weight's kind of more on the back foot. Or to the first one that we did with the hands down, you've got that why God, you're kind of off balance here. So the traditional boxing stance, the balance is a massive pro for that one. Another pro is you can work on all of your punches that you've worked on in the past in the gym. All punches work from a traditional boxing stance compared to this stance or this stance or this stance. With a traditional boxing stance, you can pull off just about any punch that you want. And I guess the cons with this is 
It's the traditional boxing stance. 95% of boxers have this boxing stance. So when you're in there with someone, you've got to do something special to be able to land them punches. You've got to be someone special to have success in doing this because people are used to fighting or training with people with this boxing stance. So how do you beat someone with this boxing stance? Well, basically it's the same way as you would beat all of the other boxing styles, all combined. So you've got the feints, you've got the multiple punches, you've got the head body punches. And it really comes down to the opponent you're in with, what their style is, how good they are, how good they are not. So guys, but the most important thing is you practice, find out what boxing stance works for you, do that, stick with that. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Also, any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will be answering them. Thank you.